You're listening to the King of the Fourth podcast, offering in-depth analysis on all things Boston Celtics with your hosts, Jim and Mike Quigley. Hey, King of the Fourth podcast. Celtics are in the championship. Um, you know, we're get, hopefully getting ready for another parade over what should have been a comfortable win in Game 7. Um of the Eastern Conference Finals turned into really a hot attack session and instead of a celebratory um, excitement after the win, I just felt uh, a lot of, you know, um, pleasant relief, I guess. <laughs> you know, it was the way I felt. Um, this team, Mike, uh, I'll give quick opening thoughts. They they just continue to be resilient. Um and lucky, I would add. Yeah, they're going to the NBA Finals. Resilient. It's a big and, deal. Like, yeah, it is a big deal. They, they, um, you know, seven and two on the road, game seven on the road, um, withstood another great performance from Jimmy Butler. Um, you know, I thought played much better, led wire to wire, led by double digits almost the entire game. Um, and, and and got the win. Um, so I guess I'll ask you, where do you want to start today? Do we want to start talking about, um, you know, the end of that game? Or do we want to go over the, the whole game and this where this team's been and where they're going? Um, I almost want to hit on what happened at the end first to get that out of the way. Um, and then, then get into the other stuff. But wherever you want to go, we can go, Mike. Yeah, I just want to start out with shouting out the great effort by the you know team defensively all night. Al Horford setting the tone in the first quarter, blocking a dunk at the rim. You know, Grant Williams running the floor to start the game to get easy layups. Tatum and Brown just moving the ball so well, setting their guys up, setting the tone. And then, you know, them just taking Miami's punches and then responding with runs of their own. I, I thought it was a championship level win up until the last three minutes when they almost blew it. Um, but really just some great individual efforts that, that led to this win. I thought Smart defensively was just really, really on point. Him and Al on the defensive end were really the reason they won. Um, and then Jason Tatum making some really big shots. But we certainly can jump into the last three minutes of the game uh, where the Celtics had a comfortable lead and then almost – you know, pissed away their opportunity to go to the NBA Finals. So uh, why don't we start with your thoughts on what happened and, you know, how they can adjust, and we'll, I'll, uh, I'll respond to some of your opening thoughts. I'll just start off with this. You know, um, in the moment, I almost just couldn't believe it, it was happening um, mm-hmm. where they just really just needed one hoop over the last, you know, two-plus minutes to, to ISIS. Yep. That's all it really would have taken. And, um, you know, I've thought about it since in the moment, you know, I'm more in shock, but since I was like, I, it's hard to fathom what would be a bigger choke job in basketball, my basketball viewing experience, not just Celtics. Than this, I mean, the only thing I could come up sports-wise was Atlanta against the Patriots in the Super Bowl. I, I, I think that's how bad it would have been. And spots that I, I feel like they actually should not have been in if they had lost, they probably would have. You know, what that would have meant for Marcus Smart going into the offseason, I don't know if he could come back. You know, that's how bad it, it, it almost was. And I hate to be dramatic, but that's that's just the way it kind of it kind of felt, you know, when I thought about it afterwards. We're talking about a 13 point lead with three and a half minutes to go, uh, 11 point lead with under three. And, you know, you don't score. Marcus Smart has three wide open looks from three misses wow. them all. I mean, they they weren't bad misses either. They were online, but he, they were missed. You know, he had that. um layup at the end where he, 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 you know, I thought he was kind of out of control and, and, you know, took it upon himself. Um, Grant Williams in in that mix got a nice pass with Tatum that he ended up being um, 
the, the Miami made a good defensive play. I'm not so sure how strong he went. And, and you know, in between all that, you have the Jalen Brown offensive foul. And, and you just even, you wonder, you know, and the weird part about it, like, especially the smart and Grant Williams plays, like, if you watch it in real time, Jason Tatum's taking on two defenders. He's driving downhill. He makes the right basketball play. Every single play. Uh, on every single one. It, so it wasn't like they – it wasn't what, what – that was what so, was so, like, unnerving and weird about it. It wasn't like they were turning the ball over or taking really bad shots. Um, that wasn't the case. They, they were missing really good shots. I, I just have to wonder, like, the first two times down the court, that doesn't work. Do you want to take a timeout? Yes. And, and maybe change things up. Off a miss, do you want to push? Because you're really one hoop away from just finishing these guys. And, um, you know, it, it came real close. I, I actually, you know, the way they walked the ball off the floor um, and the way they approached it, they approached it with confidence that they were going to execute, but they didn't execute. And they didn't execute two or three times in a row. And at one point, at some point, you got to reevaluate how things are going and change it up. Um, and I, I got to tell you, when Jimmy Butler put that shot up, I, I thought for sure it was going in. <laughs> I thought for sure. I, I was like, oh, they, they're losing this game. But that, that's, that's where I was. I don't know where you were there, but that's exactly where I was at that moment. <laughs> Yeah, I well in that moment I felt like why is he pulling up? He's got Al Horford one on one. Why isn't he just going to basket? And then when he pulled up and he left his hand, I was like, Oh man, this is going in. Yeah. Uh, it looked it looked like it was right on. And he had been pretty money from three the last two games when they've given him space. He's um, just a big time player. Yeah. Um, but obviously it missed and um you know, that worked out. I guess Al defended him right, but Al was in, I mean, Al was in no, no man's land. That's, you know, against Jimmy Butler in that spot. Um, I bet if you're a Miami fan, you wish and he went to the baskets because if he went, he was going to get to the free throw line at least. Um, but Hey, he didn't. And he missed the, the end of that game. The first two smart threes, I was just thinking like, those are good shots. He's wide open. One of them, I know at least one of them, there was only seven seconds left on the shot clock. And um, really, there was nobody closing out on him. So it was like a shot we've seen him hit all year, especially in those moments. And he had already scored, I think, 22 points in the game at yeah. that point. So he had made, I know earlier in that half, he made a huge three at the end of the, two huge threes at the end of the shot clock that Smart hit in the second half. So he had been failing a little bit, but you know, then he took the third one and missed that. And on the other end, you were just seeing Miami make difficult shots and then on top of it, get some loose balls. I think there was one loose ball Miami got that was a dunk put back by Strauss uh, that maybe cut the game to two. Oh, the three uh, point of the acrobatic three cut the game to two. That's, that's what cut the game. Yeah. But Strauss, yeah. I feel like Strauss got all his points in like the last two minutes. And you know, when, when I saw Smart go into the basket um, when we were up to, I was like, this this game's over. And in the back of my mind, I was thinking, um, it, this is on him and people are going to blame him for this. And I don't know where we go from here. It just felt really, really defeating, just a horrible feeling. Um, so I think in hindsight now, a timeout by Ime would have been good. Uh, but also, since you won the game and you're Eastern Conference champions, they really have to start discussing what their end of the game strategy looks like. Because rewatching, I did rewatch the last three minutes. I think part of Miami's game plan was to keep Marcus Smart open. Oh, there's no doubt. There's yeah, no doubt. and there was there was actually an opportunity because um, on the last one, I believe they actually so they kept him open, closed out on him late. He could have let them go by going for a couple of dribbles and maybe even um, hit like a lot of free throw line jumper or something. Yeah. Or something like that. Or a runner, mm -hmm. which is pretty comfortable with. I, I There's no doubt they did that. Um, you know, and hopefully this is something, 
you know, the question is, are they finally going to learn from this? Because they've done this throughout the year and uh, they've done it in the playoffs. Even it was the same thing against Milwaukee in a, in a different way. Mm-hmm. Um, are they going to well, game five? Yeah. Close these guys down when they have the chance. Um, like, I, uh, you know, on a make a dead ball, I understand like running clock, but maybe with this team, especially how you had them playing, they were pushing the ball game on a miss, you know, maybe push it a little bit, especially in the case where Miami only had one timeout left. They had no more challenges. So if you get into the hoop and even on a close foul call, there's nothing really Miami could do about it. Um, you know, back, in, back in the day, you know, the Celtics used to do such a good job of either with Antoine Walker or Kevin Garnett in those situations, maybe getting the ball down the post a little bit and working the shot clock down before they got the ball back to Pierce where it was kind of like mm-hmm. the defense was forced to cover him one-on-one ISO to end that possession. And, you know, sometimes they would run those last possessions through Paul, but they would, they would run it through other guys to open up action for him to have a better opportunity. And I feel like the Celtics, well, the way they play now is to find the open man and get the right shot. But at the end of these games, what you're seeing is that Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum are never the guys to take the shots. So you have your two best players not trying to score at the end of close games because the defense is dictating what they do because you have the ball in Tatum's hands. So if you're going to have the ball in Tatum's hands, how do you get it to Jalen Brown in a position to score one? Or can we take the ball out of Tatum's hand and maybe high post him or have him come off a screen from Jalen Brown? where the defense has to make a decision about who they're covering. Well, I think you run it through Al or can you put smart on the post? Like, I think they just have to switch it up a little bit. And I think the score and time dictates a lot of different things too. I I wonder if this is a tie game or a two point game. If Miami's leaving Marcus smile wide open like that, because you'd hate to just kind of lose your season like that, but where you have to come back, you need to force a miss, you know, it's, it's worth the gamble. Um, Mm -hmm. I just, you know, the first couple of times it didn't work and we're getting to about a minute and a half, two minutes left. I yeah. just use one of those timeouts. But even game six, you know, even in, ga- even in game six, you're not getting smart. And t- I mean, um, Tatum and Brown shooting the basketball. You know, you got everybody else taking the shots. And like, I, I love the team ball. That's why they're here. But, you know, we're in the NBA finals now. If we're in a game six, game seven situation and Jason Tatum doesn't take any shots in the fourth quarter, and you come to the podium saying, well, he was triple team making the right play. It's like, yeah, I guess. But you also have a guy who has the ability to score 50 points in a close game, not taking shots. So Yeah, you got to find we, ways. You yeah, what are we him. doing to help him? Yeah, You got to find a way to put him in different spots um, instead of just initiating the offense like that. Right. Um, I mean, like I said, though, if it, you know, you run it like that with about two minutes left and, you know, smart hits a shot. Maybe that's something you just continue with well, yeah. because they are open shots. Um, you know, it also is helpful to have Robin in those situations and not having him to be anywhere on the offensive defensive glass or, you know, rely as a lob candidate um, changes the way the teams defend you. Eh, but they have to learn. You know, we're talking about the different things that they need to do. There's options. The coaches have better ones than us. You know, and they, they, okay. they, you know, they, they know what they can pull out and what they can do. Um, I, I, I do think you got to stop talking to this team about pushing it, you know, when they're up in those spots a little bit off misses uh, to keep that aggressiveness and keep that mentality and, and look to finish these guys off. Um, because, wow, I, I mean, that was just, it was, it was kind of, it was kind of unbelievable, you know, you know, one point, even Kyle Lowry got to the hoop, you know, Kyle Lowry, you yeah. know, it was a blatant push off, you know, and then they called the not so blatant one against Brown uh, against out you know, the, but the officiating week, we can talk about how terrible that was later, but um, it was, uh, you know, watching it in real time. I didn't quite have the measure of just how big it would have been if they lost now they won, you know, so you can't really hold it against them. The idea in the playoffs, no matter how you do it, it's just a win. And right. they advance. They, they they got through game seven. They go into the NBA finals. They got over that hump. They did it on the road. They won wide. They led wide to wire, most of it by double digits. You know, Miami never had a lead in game seven. 
which yep. is kind of unbelievable to think about a home team in game seven and a game decided by four points, never having a lead. Um, Marcus Smart, to his credit, hit the two biggest free throws of his life. He misses those free throws or even just one. You know, Miami's got a chance to tie there at the end or win it even. So those are huge free throws after all the misses he had. And, he, you know, a lot of guys after the stretch he had would have just probably clanked those. Yeah. Um, And and so here they are. They're in the NBA Finals. And it really – you mentioned going back and listening to our old pods. I haven't done that. But uh, it really is an amazing thing considering where they were right um and some of the stuff that they've gone through in this play these playoffs to be including those last three minutes um to be where they are right now um you know and maybe you can talk about that i was never ever in the split up the the jail and jason i know even when you brought would bring that up on old pods that i pushed that away but i certainly entertained trading smart and, and was kind of shocked at where they were. Um, you know, everyone keeps pointing that January 6th game against the Knicks, but even before that, the Minnesota games and, Minnesota, and yeah. the other stuff that happened. Yeah, I mean, it was a year and a half where they just lost so many big leads and so many to so many bad teams. You know, it was a while there where it was, we got we to move on from Brad and Danny. And just it was front office moves were just – you know, tremendous this off season in hindsight, bringing in Ime, putting Brad in the spot he was in, the team he built to start the season, and then the team he reshaped it into at the deadline and seeing how well Derek White's played. It's been, it's been incredible. Uh, this team was in 12th place uh, halfway through the season. Uh, they weren't even in the plan. And I remember at that time during the pod, I was saying, you know, I don't even think they could beat Atlanta in a playing game right now. That's how bad they were playing. And, you know, I remember last year I asked you, too, um, do you think that Tatum and Brown could ever win a championship together? And both our answers on the pod was no, we don't think they could. Uh, we didn't think they had what it took. I and think I said that. Yeah, you, you said, um, you, you know, I listened to the re listened to the pod. You said at this point right now, I don't think they they'll win a championship together in the Celtics uniform. Oh. Uh, um, that, that's where we were. Um, and you know, to see where these guys are right now, uh, the game six win on the road in Milwaukee, the game seven win on the road in Miami, you know, after that game five loss and after that game six loss, you know, in the two separate series, uh, you know, the injuries with, you know, Derek White missed the game, Marcus Smart missed the game, uh, Robert Williams has missed several games. Uh, guys have just stepped up. There's been so many big moments with Grant Williams in game seven of the Milwaukee series, the Al Horford game uh, against Milwaukee. It's just, it's, it's pretty amazing where they are. And if they pull this out, if they win the championship, I think we'll be talking about one of the greatest Celtic runs of all time in one season. To so see where to well, see where least, they were and where they at least up. turn around, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a, I, I, yeah. I'd like to see people dig around in sports to see. You know, I remember maybe it was one year with the Giants where they, but in season where they, not a basketball. I don't think. We've yeah, the team like turns this. around like this. It, it's it's you, you just don't see it. Um, I think in fairness in that conversation, I think I said in context, it's really hard to win a championship that these guys have the ability, but I, I don't see it right now because it's so hard to win a champion. I, I didn't ever want to split them up. I know that because I, not that I wasn't disappointed with the way they were playing, but you just were never going to get field value back and yeah. you were going to watch it work somewhere else, which was going to be, you know, really painful. Mm-hmm. Um, and you were going to go backwards as a team and n- not get to potentially where, as high as you could with these guys. I I didn't see this turnaround coming. I don't think anyone did. I did think they could be competitive. I did think they could get better. I think one of the things we were um, unfair we were unfair about is that definitely our criticism of Ime early mm-hmm. in the year. Um, I think you know the consensus from us is that he could coach, obviously because of the, he he taught them to defend 
in a way that, you know, was kind of unique on um, what he was doing strategically, you know, with having Rob float and switching one through four. And they seem to have got it, even though they really, really got it as the season went along, even early in there, they were pretty good. But where I, I know I was wrong is my criticism was it probably would have been helpful to have a veteran coach on the bench with him for um, in-game strategy yeah, it's true, yeah. and things like that. And, and, you know, I look back now and I think that's a really stupid statement on my behalf because I would have meant Brad would have forced an assistant onto him that he may not have wanted. And I think one of the best moves Brad made, and it's underrated, is he just let Emei pick his entire staff. That's right, yeah. And um, he showed full confidence in him. And thank God I'm not the general manager because I probably wouldn't have, would have insisted on that. And um, that would have been wrong. That would have been wrong. And it, um, he, I think he's gotten better as the season's gone along. And we probably should have realized that that was going to happen based on his ability to get them to defend early in the season. Yeah. Uh, so real short-sighted on our part. Uh, yeah. we, were, we were tough on him. We really were. Yeah, and I think a lot of the toughness on this team at the time was justified. I know in the past we we were, you know, talking. I, I never wanted to split up Jalen and Jason, but I always, you know, talked about, you know, what was Rob's value in the open market? What was Marcus Smart's value? Mm-hmm. And I, I remember last year we had a real conversation about Smart saying, is he a step slow? Has he lost some athleticism? He looks yeah, he was older as good out there. Season. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. he was um, much better this season. Of course, right? I mean, he really turned it on. And I think one thing we talked about at the beginning of this season that we were both right about was they finally gave Marcus Smart the opportunity to be the point guard. Yeah. And they took the ball out of a ball-dominating point guard's hands and said, Marcus, we want you to run the ship. And on both ends of the floor, that's a big reason where they are where they are today. He's Defensive Player of the Year. You know, he, he does – play a lot of like Gary Payton with that toughness and the ability to settle his team down on offense while also taking on the best guy defensively. Um, so, you know, there's, there's a lot that went into these changes and, and how well they're playing. And I think it was trusting smart and he finally letting the reins on Robert Williams and letting him to play big minutes have put the Celtics in the spot. And, you know, maybe it's, we plan another pod this week but I am leaning towards thinking the Celtics can win this series. I, I feel like they have the pieces in place. It would be very difficult because you're the road team against, you know, the best team of the decade. Um, but I think the Celtics match up well, and I do think the Celtics can attack the guards on Golden State um, where they can play defense on offense by – finding their matchups and hunting at Curry and hunting at Thompson because Clay Thompson is not the same defensive player he was pre-injury. Well, they certainly battle tested, you know, um, mm-hmm. the road wasn't easy they were going through the nets and all, even though it was a sweep, all those games are very, very close. Um, Great games, yeah. They, you know, getting through Milwaukee, um, which, you know, was a different type of challenge and really physical and Giannis being superhuman really throughout the entire series until game seven. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you went on the road in game seven against a team that was not as good as you, but was very, very tough. Yeah. Really, really tough minded and didn't get nearly enough credit for how they defended. Um, Mm -hmm. I I thought there was a lot of time with criticism of the Celtics justified, but at the same time, they needed to be credit to Miami. um, How tough they were and how they defend. And I don't Um, think any of us could have predicted how well uh, Victor Oladipo played the Celtics on the defensive end. Yeah, I know. That's how he, much he changed the series. He, he used to be that. He used to be an opportunistic yeah. guy that could create steals and a good defender. So uh, good for him for getting back to that. And, you know, yeah. hopefully he can make some money this offseason. Oh, he will be. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I, I look at now this this next challenge, and, and this is this is unique. Um, this is I, I think the best team the Celtics have played. I think this is the best team the Warriors have played this playoffs. I think, um, you know, it's really an interesting, from a pure viewing perspective, it's it's great. You know, the styles of the Warriors' constant movement on offense against the Celtics' switchability and their, um, their great defense. 
And then you have, you know, kind of the, the Splash Brothers who, um, you know, don't really go into iso ball, but are able to do their own thing and the way they can shoot and create offense for themselves and Jordan Poole against yeah. these two big um, budding superstar wings that the Celtics have and, and Brown and Tatum. It, it really, it's, it's, it's great. It's, it's just a great NBA Finals matchup. I like the way the Celtics match up. I like the way the Celtics match up a lot better if you tell me we're going to get a few games of healthy Rob Williams. Well, yeah. I, he was real deterrent for them um, when they played in Golden State. Um, you know, uh, Draymond Green, who just has a tremendous podcast. He really is. He, if you don't listen to it, I, I think you should add it to your listening uh, rotation. Um, he's really, really good. And he's continued to do it throughout the playoffs, even when he's I lost. Know. But I he know. had Jason Tatum on not long after they played. And he talked about just like preparing for Rob pregame and getting the ball higher off the backboard and how you're going to attack them. And he said, you just really had no idea until you played him. And it changed the way they attacked everything. A, a, a Draymond, just the impact that Rob had on them defensively on, you know, we're looking to drive and Celtics can just stay home on the shooters because good luck to you. Mm -hmm. You know, you think you get a, you, you make a cut and you, 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 and all of a sudden Rob's out of nowhere with the help when you think you have an uncontested layup off a pass for a cut. He, he changes, especially against a team that, move so much like Golden State and so dictated on ball movement and getting paint touches. He really upsets that, you know, and you wouldn't think so because they're, uh, you know, the amount of threes they put, shoot, but he really upsets that. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, Daniel Tice, I think will be okay. He, he's a better fifth of the series. He is. But he's a huge step down. Yeah. Just an enormous step down. Unless if it's the Rob we saw game six and seven, who clearly was not healthy, could not get off the ground, could not even gather a rebound, never mind really defend the paid. I, so I look, when I look at this series, can the Celtics win without Rob Williams? Sure. But I, I don't think it's a lot different than what you've seen throughout this playoffs. It's going to be a struggle to get by. They're a contending team that can win a title without Rob. They're a dominant team. And the best team in the NBA, in my opinion, with Rob, with a healthy Rob Williams. Yeah. And I'm just I'm wondering what we're going to see. He's had three days off. Does he play in game one? Do you rest him the first two games and just dress him in Boston um, to avoid getting on the cross country flights? I know. You know, it really is. It's it's fascinating to me. Or does he feel good for game one? So you just have him go game one, game two, and if he can't play in Boston, so be it. I, I, because there's a, there's big breaks between game one and game two, too. I think yeah. Wednesday to Monday or Wednesday to Sunday or something like so that. Thursday to yeah. Sunday or Thursday to Monday. Um, I agree with you. I, I, I think it's spot on that if Rob's healthy, I think it shifts who's the favorite. And it's the Celtics. If, and I, I said that going in against every team in the NBA this year, and I still feel the same way. But what we saw in game six and seven is he's not. Um, so I do think if that's the case, Daniel Tice will have um, an impact in this series, whether positive or negative. I think he can play. I think he can match up against Looney. I don't think he's going to get caught up in too many bad matchups if you're able to hide him on you know, Golden State center until Golden State goes small. And then, you know, when Draymond's playing center, Tice won't be in the game anyways. But I also think um, that Tice could have a positive impact similar to the one he had in Brooklyn when he had that 17, like, point twelve rebound game because I think he matches up perfectly yeah. offensively against a guy like Looney where you can score on him. So I think Tice could have a positive impact, but my hope is that it's Rob Williams, obviously. Yeah, yeah. I know. I, I don't think Tice will be a net negative in this unless they just leave him open and he takes those stupid threes early in the shot clock. Well, that would be uh, bad. Yeah, which they're going to do. They're not going to cover him up there. Of course not. So I don't think he's going to be a net negative. Um, I think it's a series he can definitely play. Um, I think he'll play even if Rob is, you know, good to go. To I think so, too. Rob some minutes. 
mm-hmm. but it's 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 a matter of how much you know um and well, if, for the more plan, the you, more you're thinking like two minutes a half yeah the more yeah. it you see the worse it is for the celtics mm-hmm. um i think at the end of the day i you know and then the other part of this you know there's there's some there's some good subplots that look the Celtics have defended Golden State as well as anybody for the last six, seven years. Um, I think Golden State has a winning home record against every team in the NBA during this run, except for the Celtics. Celtics, Um, So the Celtics have really rose to the occasion against these guys. I think the switchability has really caused Golden State some issues. Their size has caused Golden State some issues. Their athletic ability has caused Golden State some issues. But I just look at the last, I hate to go back, but the Celtics learn from the, what has happened to them. And are you going to take advantage of opportunities? If you're up 10 with five minutes to go, these guys can erase that in a blink of an eye. They sure can. They can erase it in a blink of an eye. So can you withstand that? Can you learn from these experiences? Because that's part of being a young team. That's part of being a young championship team is you have these things happen to you. And they had them happen to them now when they won. Can they learn from it uh, this quickly and be able to close? Um, I guess my prediction, Mike, if we're doing predictions, uh, I've been going back and forth on this, back and forth. Um, and I may change again. But I am I am going to say Celtics in six or seven. And I'm going to say that because I do think the Celtics are going to figure out how to get three to four games of a really healthy Rob Williams or close to healthy 20, 25 minutes of what you saw in game five against Miami. Right. Yeah. And, and, um, and I think that's going to be enough. Yeah, I, I agree. I think it's going to go seven. I think the Celtics are going to win another road game seven uh, to take the NBA finals. I just think it's going to be, I, I, I think we could have an NBA finals with, majority like last possession games a lot of them i think i think it could be like a game seven last team with the balls down by two points with the ball to end the, God, end the finals i hope not and i can't take that i have a feeling that's what we might be looking i can't at. i'm 42 now i can't take that shit anymore um, and i'm interested to see this andrew wiggins on case and tatum matchup because i think yeah. that's what we're going to see and to andrew wiggins's credit he he turned himself into a really good oh, defender he's perfect this year. for them yeah, uh, except Perfect. on the offensive end, I think he could shoot them out of games, and that could yeah. help the Celtics in the series. But... We've seen him uh, even against Boston earlier in the year. He he couldn't miss against the Celtics earlier mm-hmm. in the year. Um, yeah, he's actually – that's the scary thing about Golden State is they have some guys who have always played well against the Celtics. Um, Otto Porter, I don't know if you remember him with Washington, but those three home games they won in the playoffs a couple of years ago, yeah. he just went nuts. Um so I, I I keep an eye on him in this series. Uh, Andre Iguodala is coming back, and I, I feel like he's always been a thorn in the Celtics' side on both ends of the court. Mm-hmm. Um, and, of course, Andrew Wiggins, even in his days in Minnesota, he'd shoot like 30% for the season from the floor and like 65% from the field against Boston. So, you know, um, this but, series... But on the flip end of that... Um... Steph Curry against Marcus Smart in his career, 29% three-point struggle. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I feel like as good as both teams are defensively, we are going to have some really entertaining high-scoring games. We're going to have some low-scoring games that so are going to be a struggle and a rock fight, but we're going to have some games where both teams are on, and it's just going to be like, oh, my God, we're in the fourth quarter. It's like 115 to 115 with two minutes left. <laughs> and it's just going to be like, like it's just going to go by fast. It's going to be a lot of dunks and a lot of threes and a lot of and yeah, ones. The game and, Rob doesn't play a play well. Yeah. And Curry is going to hit these threes that are just going to make us pull our hair out of our head. Um, and so just get ready. Buckle your seatbelts. I think this is going to be one of the best NBA finals we've seen in a long time. Very last thing I have to say. So going into game one, I think this is one the Celtics can um, really sneak and win. Golden State's been off for a while. There's yeah. got to be some rust. They really haven't played a team like Boston. I know Boston hasn't played a team like Golden State. But I think Boston's had enough time off now where it's not going to be as, um, as uh, you know, 
the Miami situation where they just went in one night and they were back at game one after playing game seven against Milwaukee. They have three, four nights off. I think this could be really a game where um, the Celtics can uh, still win um, uh, in Golden State is, is game one. Yeah, we'll see what happens. I think no matter what, um, the Celtics are hard to beat twice in a row. So I have a feeling the Celtics is going to steal one. And the thing that I think my last key to the series is that the Celtics have gotten away with losing some really pivotal games at home. You know, and against Miami, they lost, what they go, two. one and two at home, right? Yeah, they lost um, games one and games uh, six at home. I, game I th- three and game six, I'm sorry. In order to beat Golden State, they have to go at least two and one at home. They're not going to win more than one. Or it's going to be really hard for them to win more than one in that arena. It's one of the hardest places to play in the NBA. You also said if the Celtics go seven against Miami, they'll lose because it's going to be really hard to win a game seven on the road in Miami. Yeah, but I think in this series, <laughs> uh, it's going to be important to win those home games. Uh, to at least put yourself in a position, you can have a 3-2 lead going into game six. They Similar seem more comfortable Miami. on the road. It's really weird. They seem more comfortable <laughs> on the road. It's like, I don't know if the pressure's off or they're just locked in and fired up, but they, they, yeah, they, but Golden State's like one of the hardest places to win in all yeah. sports. It's, yeah, exactly. Yeah. They, they, they tend to win there. The yeah, Celtics do. Yeah, they tend to yeah. win there, <laughs> which is weird. Yeah. And Golden State tends to win in Boston. Maybe it'll be 3 3 going into game seven. All the road teams won. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This season, nothing will surprise me. Nothing yeah. will surprise me. Well, until it happens. And, like and nobody get Sunday fucking night. COVID. Nobody get fucking COVID. Yeah, no, there's no testing this week. <laughs> Do not even test for the yeah. NBA finals, except if you have uh Tony Brothers ref in the game. Test him at least eleven times before the game starts. Yeah, keep testing Mike Breen. <laughs> so it'll be no, fine. There'll be no TNT. Them. It'll be no TNT. It's gonna be all ABC, ESPN. It's all ABC. Oh, that's too bad. I like the TNT crew. I do. All right. Well, have a good day, Jim. Uh, Thanks for listening, podcast people. Celtics, NBA Finals. Woo! Let's go.